So what is good at the moment in the world, Freya? What are you enjoying right now? Put a positive spin on something that maybe people said was a bit negative. Obviously, the whole G2 conversation. There's been a lot of uh, critics for, oh, for obviously, sure. some of the new new joinings. Um, but I want to focus on Manasi because I think he did a really good job at, um, at the full groups. Um, got his, I guess, last game in the MVP, but he was highest rated player at the tournament, got his first MVP, got his first ace as well, which kind of, like, shocked me a little bit, like, versus ace with G2, because um, I didn't realise that that was his first one, um, which yeah, is kind of yeah. nuts, yeah. Um, but I, I just think, like, with all the changes that were going on with G2, and then I'm sure most people have read that x interview as well, where he was saying, you know, I want to give Manasi more space, I want him to be more proactive, I want him to take more responsibility. I think we kind of saw that immediately coming into effect from him, particularly in that Vitality game uh, to where they qualified for the Royal Arena. Because um, that was a rematch, obviously, from earlier in the tournament where I think it was like like 16-3, 16-5, 16-8 or something like that, um, where it was, you know, really decisive to either side. And then this one was like, you know, the marathon match, the longest game I think we had there. Um, and particularly in the final map, um, I think he was super instrumental <coughs> in terms of actually uh, closing out for G2. Um, and even in the map, the Vitality one, which is uh, Dust 2, the second one, um, he was still really hanging in, in there. And I think that was a really sort of positive sign from him where we've been wanting to see a more consistent monarchy. Obviously, we send him you know pulling off some really really impactful plays um but just the consistency element was really really good to see i think he only had like two negative ratings throughout the entire tournament um which i think is really impressive considering there's kind of a whole new system being integrated with them as well um so yeah i wanted to start off by giving yeah props to him that's my good point it it seemed like with alexi b I well, I, I'm assuming this now essentially with with Hooksy and with what X has said about wanting to give Monacy more freedom <coughs> is he was much more mobile, I would say, at the fall groups than what I saw before. Because before I would actually harp on some of the times when I would see him play for G2 where he would look very static. It looked like they almost wanted to use him as a turret. And I just thought that's just because they don't, he doesn't know what to do in terms of what's the next move, where should he go next to be on the map and to be more dynamic. They were probably rel relying a lot more on the rifler uh, power for G2. And now I, th I, I think they're just taking the leash off. They're letting him go wherever he wants to go. And that's making him su such a incredibly deadly force because, it, you know, every time I watched him play Nuke back in the day, it was just like, why is he playing Heaven every single round? And now he played Vitality on it and he didn't have like a crazy game, but he was moving around a little bit more. He's just, it seems like he's either finding out plays for people to run to help him out or, and he's just bringing those to the table and they're saying yes, or <clears throat> he's, just, he's just doing whatever he feels like. And I, they should at this point trust him to do what he feels like because he has the skill to be such a game breaking player to to be on that level of mechanical ability with people like simple in terms of speed and consistency in terms of accuracy so for him to have this opportunity to show what he's actually made of with under hooksy or i may maybe kind of like not under hooksy maybe he's just kind of doing what he feels like I, i'm love i'm loving this look of monesty because it seems like he's going to now ascend and probably have much more onus in terms of where the team goes Sure. I've got a few points for that. One on the whole ace thing. I agree, though. That's one of those weird things where if you ever see those stats, they always never make sense in your brain. Like, I'll give you a random one. You, they'll always get those stats where people are like, did you know in his career, Simple's only ever done two 1v5s? And you think, like, what? I'm pretty sure I see him do one, like, every game, don't I? Like, what? But, in your, but apparently those stats are real. Like, if you ever go look them up, it's actually very rare how and, and almost no one's ever done, like, a 1v5 and stuff as a clutch or whatever. Like, it really is, like, super, super insanely rare, even though your brain it feels like it's every frag movie in it. Then on the whole Odyssey thing, right there's a few angles to this i think which is one i personally have tried to temper expectations for this player the whole time he's been in g2 because i think the most unfair part is it's like when Lockie came in astralis it's like you just throw this guy in tier one lands immediately and then it's not just you're at the land you're at the land you're supposed to go like the semi-final every time and if you don't you've failed and you're going to go head to head with like ziwu and simple and then everyone is just going to look and go opa versus opa like did you have to succeed it's like you shouldn't even be shouldn't even be considered on that level like that's not even really a career path normally you go and look teams like if he was in team spirit for example he wouldn't have any of the scrutiny he does now he'd have games where he popped off and everybody like wow what a sick player can't wait for him like just like dexter or even the wonderful guy now like but he wouldn't have the same scrutiny so i do think unfortunately the whole g2 circus and the whole x stars and carlos and nico that's all just like impinging on monarchy in a way it sort of shouldn't now at the same time though obviously it is an insane opportunity like if you can make use of that a la the bits of the world and if lucky could have like yeah it also it does give you a chance to potentially boost your whole career way further than it would be so 
I've generally sort of like tried to be like, look, let's not expect him to be a star. Let's not put too much pressure on him. But I do also think if you look, it does look like they've changed something up since Huxley came in. Because mm. the thing is, if I even think of Alexi B, when I always try to do with the IGLs, is just think, what was their last situation like? What is their track record like? So if you think about Orpers Alexi B's worked with, it's only really two people at the pro level. It's Alu and it's Mantu. That's it. And the problem there is, as you might obviously be able to infer by the end situation, Alu has his own strong opinions about what he wants to do and absolutely a self-motivated opera who's going to go where he wants. So I imagine for him, Alexi B doesn't have to like control him. He's just going to do his shit anyway. And I think, if anything, I would imagine Mantu is on the opposite side. I think Mantu is another one of those players is why Alexi B has this rep that he has to micromanage everyone. That's a guy who hadn't been tier one. If people don't know, the story with Mantu was he wasn't an opera before he joined Dense. Uh, OG, rather. Like, and as a result, he, he had to learn that on the fly and also he got no lands. He had the first like year and a half was just all online pretty much. So in that scenario, like I, I think it's a really difficult situation to bring up a young player like this because the idea is you want him to one day be simple as he would, but he isn't right now. But at the same time, you have to let him make the mistakes. You have to give him the freedom to do that. Yeah. So I also imagine like the moving around of the pieces as also seems like it's actually created more space for him in that regard. I wonder if they even almost cynically knew like you can't just throw him in the deep, deep end when he first came into the lineup. But the difference is I would say if you look over the time he's been in the team, I do think you've seen gradual improvement. It's just it wasn't like the real problem is the bits and the Zewoos have ruined like what being a rookie is for all these fans. They really think everyone just hits the ground running and like the MVP. It's like that's not going to happen. And also you're just never going to get you're not going to start with all the space and resources in a team with Nico and Hunter and all these guys and like the, the point of joining the team wasn't to be the player like you're joining to be another player so I think the cool thing for me is if they can ever get it figured out because obviously the Nico Hunter angle in theory works like in their team he should essentially be in like the bit role where you have like you, you have Simple he's already set up for everything you have Electronic who's amazing as well but then if you can bring this third guy in the games you do have a big game like this you're going to push him over the edge because I do think like G2 had no business beat if I tell you in that series Monty basically just hard carried like he had a bunch of games where no one could expect he was going to produce like that so I thought yeah he's been a massive I don't have any real criticisms against him I, I think that's mm. actually a good shout for good in this and it's probably one of the only almost entirely good additions to G2 looks like it's great for the future it's going to work out probably was worth the money in the end I think it's tracking pretty well so far and actually if anything they've got so many problems elsewhere this thing finally coming online now and him getting really good this is the perfect time like, this, this actually might fucking drag them out of whatever issues they're in and give them a chance running into playoffs into the major it could maybe even happen in that sense because I, like I say I'd I don't know, like, the rest of G2 definitely has plenty of problems still, but this guy seems that he doesn't. He seems set. And also, here's the other thing to remember. I always try to add this in. Luckily, if as long as he plays well, whether this is the lineup or not, he'll still be there. The point is, right now, like, pretty sweet, if you're making, like, the list of, like, who you'd replace, he's, like, next to Nico on, like, the cannot be cut list right now. You'd obviously keep this guy for the next year or so. So he's going to be some part of G2 in any way going forwards as it is. Anyone yeah. else got anything on that topic or we jump into the next one? I guess quickly by the numbers, I just, I just decided to look him up. He This is the fall groups. This is the most kills per round he's ever had for G2. Uh, it's this basically basically the least deaths per round he's ever had in an event for G2. And it's by far the best rating that he's put up for G2 in an, any event. So, I mean, just, I, just looking at the numbers on top of what everything that he was doing in the series that I caught, I mean... It all just it all just clicks right there. So yeah, again, great point. Want to see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe to this channel then, or you know, be a pleb and don't.